guys, I'm Ms. Shazara Mohammed, and I'm actually the Seaside Chemistry teacher at the Student Hub. So today I'm going to give you all a little bit of content. We are actually going to be doing a past paper. So we'll be doing January 2019, paper 2. Now in this past paper, you have a whole variety of topics from your chemistry syllabus. As you may know, your paper tests six questions, and we have three of these in section A, two for section B and one for section C. Now, as you can see here, I have broken down what topic each question tested in this particular paper. And let's go ahead and start off with question one. So this is one of the very common topics they tend to bring as a graph question, which is a volumetric analysis or titration. This particular question is a bit unique in that it has a redox reaction involved in it as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at this question. So an experiment was carried out to determine the percentage of iron in an iron salt sample. A 0.5 gram sample of iron salt was placed in a conical flask. To it, 25 milliliters of dilute sulfuric acid, 10 milliliters of phosphoric acid, and eight drops of an indicator were added. The contents of the flask were mixed and titrated against a 0.02 mole per dm cube solution of potassium dichromate until the endpoint was reached. We are also given an ionic equation which we will need to come back to and use. Question number one. List the apparatus that would be necessary to carry out the experiment. Now this would be based on the titration you would carry out in the lab. So think of any apparatus you may need and you can simply record a couple of those here. So the common ones would be your retort stand, your burette, your pipette, the conical flask, your measuring cylinder, the electronic balance. Some additional ones that you guys can include might be a white tile so that you can see the color change. You'll be getting two marks for that particular question, so make sure you have adequate amount of apparatus stated. Part two here, we are given a figure. And we need to read off the values and insert it into a table. It's something very common for a question one. So we are given the burette readings, the initial and final volumes for each titration. So notice we did three titrations in total. Take your time, read off the values. See if you agree with the values that I have on the screen. Now a little tip for reading off burette values. You are looking at the bottom of the meniscus. The meniscus would be the curvy part that you are seeing. So you are going to draw a line, that's the easiest way to do it, and you are reading off that value. So take a look at titration number one. The initial, we are getting a value of two. The final, we are getting 21.95. And you are continuing like this. And we are going to record these values into our table. So I'll give you guys a minute, you can feel free to pause this video, go back and just take a look at the values from figure one and see that I have just inserted it into this table. Now besides doing that, we need to calculate the volume of solution used. So we have an initial value, we have a final value. All we need to do is just to simply minus the smaller value from the larger value. So take a look at titration number one. Our final volume was 21.95 and the initial was two. You simply minus this to get the volume of solution used. So when we minus that, we will get 19.95. Feel free to double check. Do the same for titration number two and titration number three with the values that you guys are seeing. Let me know if you all got the same values. And notice that I have a little star by two of these values. We'll come back to this a bit later. But typically, when you guys are doing a titration, we usually want our values to be within point 0.1 of each other. Any greater, we would say that the value is too big and we will not be using it. So take a look at our value for titration number three. We got 18, which is very different from 20 and 19.95. So we'll come back to this a bit later, but keep that in mind for now. So now we need to use an asterisk to indicate the titration data that should be used to obtain the average titration volume of the potassium dichromate used in this experiment. So going back, notice for one and two, our values are within point one of each other. To just 
clarify this, you can use your calculator. Minus 20 and 19.95, you will get 0 0.05. Once the value is less than 0.1, it is appropriate. Now, if you do that with titration number three, you will realize it's a whole difference of two centimeter cube. So that's very different and we will not be using it to calculate our average volume. Hence, we need to calculate the average volume of potassium dichromate used. So we are simply going to add our two values together and divide them by two, just calculating the average value. So feel free again to double check and let me know if you guys got the same value, keeping our answer to two decimal places. We will get 19.98 centimeter cube of potassium dichromate used so far. So now using this information, we would like to calculate the average number of moles of potassium dichromate used in this experiment. So we can go back and see the data that we were given in the first part of the question. They mentioned a concentration. So 0 0.02 moles per dm cube. So this is a very important piece of information. We need to solve this as well as the volume we just calculated. Once you have a volume and a concentration, you can calculate the number of moles. So remember, concentration is just the number of moles in a certain volume. So if you take a look at the units, moles per dm cube, it's just the number of moles in one dm cube. And one dm cube is the same as a thousand cm cube. So this is just telling us that in 1000 cm cube, we have 0 0.02 moles of potassium dichromate. So the easiest way to do this is you can write out a statement first. 1000 cm cube contains 0 0.02 moles of potassium dichromate. We got this straight from the concentration data. It's just breaking apart what it means. We now want to find the number of moles in the volume we calculated previously. So this part is actually just a little bit of math. What you could do first is you could always do a middle step. You can calculate for the number of moles in one cm cube first, if it's gonna help you all. So let me go back here and show you guys how to get that middle step. One centimeter cube could contain, and we are going to get a fraction here. So it will be 0 0.02 divided by 1000. So now we just need to multiply that fraction by 19.98 and we will get the number of moles used in this experiment. So take a minute, go ahead and calculate this and feel free to let me know what value you guys are getting. You are going to get a decimal, so if you guys want, you can also put your answer in standard notation. So 0 0.0004 approximately, if you are leaving it in decimals. Or you guys can write it as 4.0 by 10 to the power of minus 4 moles of potassium dichromate. So this is going to be the answer for part D. Now, we need to use the equation that they gave us to determine the number of moles of Fe2 plus ions that react with 1 mole of dichromate ions. So we need to use D as well as the mole ratio to help us figure this out. Using our equation, let's get our mole ratio. So we are just simply looking at the number in front of the ions in the equation. So for the dichromate ion, notice how we are not seeing a number. So that number is 1. Let's locate Fe2 plus ion. Can you guys identify the number in front of it or the coefficient? So this is our Fe2 plus ion. Is everyone seeing that we have a coefficient of 6 in front of it? So we will say we have a 1 to 6 ratio. So going back to what we calculated in part D, we got 0 0.0004 moles of potassium dichromate. Now, if you take a look at the formula of potassium dichromate, you would see that we have two potassium ions and one dichromate ion. So it's a two to one ratio. So that means we also have 0.004 moles of dichromate ions. 
So that is how we got the value 0 0.0004 moles of dichromate reacts with six times that amount of Fe2 plus ions. So look at what I have here, that same value multiply by six. Now where did the six come from? Remember we just got our mole ratio. We got a one to six ratio. Notice in front of the dichromate ion, we had a coefficient of one. And for the Fe2 plus ion, we had a coefficient of six. So that is why we are multiplying the point 0004 by 6 to get the number of moles of Fe2 plus ions. So go ahead and calculate this value. You are supposed to get 0.0024 moles for part E. So next here, we need to calculate the number of moles of iron in the iron salt sample. Remember for this question, we are just dealing with an iron sample itself, but actually for part F, the answer is going to be the same thing as part E. So it's still going to be the point 0024 moles of iron. For part G now, we need to calculate the mass of iron. How do we do that? Let's see what information we have. We have the number of moles of iron, and we are given the molar mass of iron is 55.8 grams per mole. Can you guys think of any equation to help us figure out mass? If we have moles and molar mass, so feel free to think of, of an equation. We might need to rearrange it. That's the hint I'll give you all. It's the basic equation that you would get once you start mole concept. So moles is equal to mass divided by molar mass. So we have moles, we have molar mass, and we want to calculate mass itself. We simply just need to rearrange the subject of the formula. So you guys can try it. See if you can make mass the subject of the formula. You just get rid of molar mass. Since it is being divided by when you carry it across on the other side of the equal sign, you would need to multiply it. So that is going to give us mass is the product of the number of moles by the molar mass. So go ahead and substitute your values and see if you guys can come up with the mass. Remember your units would be important as well. So I'm showing you guys how we ended up back with just the unit of grams alone. So we have the 0 0.0024 moles multiplied by 55.8 grams per mole. Remember, the units of molar mass is grams per mole. So your moles cancels out with each other, just leaving you with grams alone. So this is how you end up with 0.134 grams, which is the unit of mass. So next, we need to calculate the percentage of iron in the iron salt sample. So in part G, we just calculated the mass of iron in our sample. Remember, your sample could have impurities. So our total mass of the sample was given as 0.5. This was given in the beginning of the question, if you guys remember. So what we are going to do, we are simply going to divide the mass of iron, which we just calculated to be 0.134 grams, by the total mass of the sample, which was given as 0.5 grams. And to get a percentage, we simply multiply by 100. So go ahead and do this calculation. See if you guys can get 26.8% of iron in our iron salt sample. So remember this value, 0.5 was given at the beginning of the question. That is one of the pieces of information I would have highlighted earlier on. So that's where we got those values. And the point 134, we got this from part G. All right, guys, so that's it for this video. Stay tuned for another video where we will continue with this question.